Welcome to our fifth annual Lincoln Society of Dayton Ice Cream Social. It is a free event and it is here at Carillon Park from 4 o'clock to 7 o'clock. We're going to have all kinds of games that were popular in the time of Lincoln. President Lincoln will be here and will be sharing a couple of thoughts. And then we're going to also have games like Coits, uh, Badminton, Graces, Egg Run, uh, Tug of War, and we're going to have lots of fun. And thank you very much for joining us today. I like Dayton. It's uh, not too big, but it's big it's enough. It's just right. It's right. It's yeah. like Goldilocks. Yeah, it's right. Mm -hmm. You go downtown, you know, you don't have all the traffic. You go to Cincinnati. I, I just go to Cincinnati. Right. How did you keep on working at it? Or do you live in Dayton? I guess. Oh, yeah, I live in Five Oaks in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood okay. Just like near Dayton Art Institute, about six to eight blocks from there. Okay. So, Have you been in uh, politics before? Yeah, I was on city commission for eight years. Okay. So, yeah. well, great. Yeah. Well, good to have you as mayor. Glad to be here. Thank you. Oh. If, if someone Everyone gets no, I've got, we have, two tickets. Two more they both have the same number. One is for your ice cream, and you keep the other one. And uh, so that when we have the raffle, or actually the door prizes, you'll have the ticket for the door prizes, and we'll just draw it out of Lincoln's hat, which will be on the table, uh, the ice cream table. Hi, how are you doing? Tomorrow, actually, is your first day. She's, yeah. She's going yeah. to. I started at 25. Do you? I got a while. Now, what's your uh, major in? Marketing. Marketing? Yes, he is. She goes to ETSU. She's from Virginia. Eastern Tennessee, East Tennessee State University. <laughs> oh, do you know where Middle Tennessee State is? Mm -hmm. In uh, Murfreesboro? Mm -hmm. That's where my son lives. And his wife lives. Oh, really? Yeah, so how far apart is that? Three hours. Sorry, Park. Okay. What about Collierville? You know, have you heard of Collierville? I've heard of that area. I feel like it's near Chattanooga. I, well, I read about in the paper this morning. It's one of the neat small towns in the country. A great downtown. Was that in I think it's near Memphis. Great magazine. Oh. Yeah, Parade yeah. magazine. That, that's a good article. Collierville. I hope you read the article about the grotto. I did. I read that. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. You're Linda. Yeah. And you are Mary. And this is Amy, her mother. And Amy, hi. I met you last year at the social here briefly. So, yes, yes. Well, okay. So, nice to see you again from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah, you let him go out of state to school. Well, yeah. My son's in Murfreesboro. He's been down there for four years. Off Park Key. Well, that one went to UT. Yeah. Well, and that one went to Purdue. You let one go. Briarcliff's third road. As the old saying is, you give them roots to grow on and wings to leave home. The problem is the part. The roots are okay, but they're not flying away. Right. Right. In uh, October, Comrade yeah. Blue Gary. But then we got this little southern girl from yeah. Calabas. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>
So do you come back here to visit? Kind of been up here in a while, but every once in a while come up for Christmas or Thanksgiving. Or so that's nice. Well, tell, tell him where you're going to be at the He'd be pleased to post his collection of Pat Beckerman. I'm doing it at Bristol Motor Speedway, one of the NASCAR tracks. Oh, in where? Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, Chapman's. Oh, wow. And the Apple Seeds of Chapman's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here in Core Speedway until next year, here, so I'm kind of learning about different organizations that we get back to. But the race is coming up very soon, so I'll be kind of their little monkey, doing whatever they want. So your whole object is to sell something, right? Mark needs to sell an idea. In a sense, in this case, um, get donations, and then we have um, just fundraisers promoting different yeah. events. Yeah. 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 That's K-12, kindergarten to 12th grade, all kind of fine art stuff. We're kind of proud. I would say, yeah. Well, you sell the idea. Pardon? Yeah. Need, uh, You're going to be there tomorrow? A unified yes. group. Yeah. Can you sell that idea? Uh, I think you, you don't part out a you glass shop. Can, like can you sell that idea? Can you sell that idea? The Lincoln Society of Dayton. Uh, has a mission, and that is to bring a sculpture of President Abraham Lincoln to the uh, location of the uh, old courthouse downtown. Oh, and so ultimately that is our objective, uh, just so you know what our mission is. Today our mission is to give you a little bit of President Lincoln and life as it was back in the time of the 1860s. We'd like to begin by having uh, the Sons of Uni Union Veterans present the colors. Color, ready, what? Ready, colors, forward, march. Color guard, halt. Color Guard, present colors. If we, if we are we, we'd like to have you all take and uh, uh, follow us in a, a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I a pledge of allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color guard, ready, two. Color guard, post colors. Color guard. Now, face. Line up. Forward. March. Color guard. Hold. Now, face. Color guard. Dismiss. And now, I'd like for each of you to say hello to the president's president. President of the United States. United States. <laughs> and here's Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> uh, the president has just thought that this is a Confederate microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, pleasure being here with you today again as we were uh, last year. Uh, Mary couldn't be with me today, but I did bring in her stead her sister Emily. Uh, one of our boys, Tad, is not very well today. She couldn't make it, but Emily was there at the White House, and she said, well, why doesn't Emily go with you? I said, that's fine. We'll take her along. And she's representing Mary today uh, here in uh, Dayton, Ohio, which we were in uh, way back there in 1859, I believe. Uh, all of you know that here in 1864 we're involved in a civil war, or a war of rebellion, whichever one you want to call it. 
Uh, I'm not going to talk much about the war right now because I think this ought to be kind of a fun day. Maybe today we can forget about the war for a few hours and relax a little bit and then uh, go back to work tomorrow. Uh, maybe that might come up later, something about the war. But right now, I want to ask you uh, a question or place an idea in your mind. Um, how many of you have ever had an event when you were young that uh, taught you something when you got older? And you remember today. Anybody in that category? Okay, well, I have something like that too. I remember, and this goes back about... Uh, well, many years ago, 30, 40 years ago, on a warm summer day, when I was about 12 years old, um, my birth mother passed away, and my father married another lady who was a great mother to us, our stepmother, and um, she was just a great lady, and I began to like her very well, and as a matter of fact, I became, uh, I loved her after a while, just like I did my own mother. And she was very delightful, liked to laugh, and that was a great uh, change in our, our um, environment there on the farm there in uh, Indiana. This is in southern Indiana. Because we hadn't been laughing very much when our, since our mother had passed away. But she liked to laugh and I liked to play jokes, practical jokes, and I sometimes would play practical jokes on her. For example, I might go down to the hen house and put a green snake in the box where the hens laid their eggs. Now green snakes are not harmful and she would reach down to get the eggs and there'd be a green snake and she'd go, ah, ah Abraham's at it again. Oh, or maybe sometimes I'd put a frog down in one of those boxes. She'd reach down to get the frog and it would come out croaking and oh, Abraham's at it again. Well, those were pretty neat little practical jokes and she laughed at all of them. And, uh, but one day uh, when I was about 12 years old, uh, we were playing out in the yard, and the rains had come the night before. Uh, there were mud holes out there, lots of mud. We were playing out in the yard. We didn't have a lot of grass like we have here today. And we were running around with our shoes off in the mud with the mud coming up between our toes. Now, how many of you have ever done that? Now, be honest. Uh, come on now, all of you have done it, haven't you, one time or another? No shoes, walking through the mud, feels so good. Any of you ever done that? <laughs> so we were out there doing that. And to see, my, my three step uh, siblings, my, my two step sisters and one step brother, uh, Dennis Hanks, who had come to live with us, and I and my sister Sarah were out there playing in the yard in the mud. <clears throat> well, my mother, stepmother, came out the door and she said, Kids, I'll be back in a few minutes going down to the barn. I'll be back in a few minutes, she said. And, um, kind of back this story up. She had gotten my father to whitewash the ceiling. It had been just bare wood and whitewash is kind of like thin paint and uh, it really made the cabin brighten up. It looked good and, and she was proud of that, uh, that white ceiling. Well, um, my mother left to go down to the barn and all of a sudden I got an idea. Another practical joke. I put her leaving together with the mud on our feet out there, and I came up with an idea, just like snapping your finger. All of a sudden, I got the idea. Oh, white ceiling, muddy feet. Oh, would she get a kick out of this? <laughs> well, she didn't really get a kick out of it, but I almost did. <laughs> anyway, she, um, she left, and I said, kids, now, here's what we're gonna do. My, my stepbrother, John, I said, now, John, he was just a little fella, about like that. I said, I want you to go through the mud, get mud all over your feet, and come up to the door of the cabin here. My mother's off somewhere down at the barn. He says, what are you going to do, Abe? I said, well, do that. Come on up here. And I said, uh, now, I want you, I'm going to turn you upside down. Now, John, he wasn't very big, so I could turn him upside down. I'm going to turn you upside down. We're going to walk through the door into that cabin, and you... While I walk across the floor of the cabin, you, John, are going to walk across the ceiling with your dirty feet, your muddy feet. And he looked at me and said, uh, Abe, uh, I don't think we're going to do that. I mean, my mother's going to be really upset about that. I said, oh, she won't mind. She'll laugh. She always laughs at my jokes, my practical jokes. He said, well, I don't know. I really don't think you should do that. I said, oh, come on, John. I finally convinced him to come on. 
Well, he, he stood there, and I turned him upside down and walked into the cabin. And I walked across the cabin uh, on the floor, holding him like that, and he was walking across the ceiling with his muddy feet up there, putting those muddy footprints up on that white ceiling, turned around and walked, made another strip of them out to the door, back the door, out the door we went. I looked back and I thought, oh, what a masterpiece. Won't my mother be happy about that? She'll laugh her head off about that. Well, I was completely wrong about that. I should have listened to John, my younger brother, because when she came back, in a few minutes, she came back and walked in the, uh, the door of the cabin, and it uh, seemed like the whole world just got quiet. You know, the wind quit blowing, birds quit twittering, cows quit moving, horses quit neighing, pigs quit running. Like the whole world was Well, either my mother had either looked up at the ceiling or maybe a drop of mud had fallen in front of her, maybe hit her on the head, and then she looked up and saw about 24 footprints up on that white ceiling that she loved so much. Well, she came out that door and she was angrier than any woman had ever seen, and she walked right towards me because she knew I was the only one that could do anything like that. Only one who would do something like that. <clears throat> she walked right towards me and she pointed her finger at me and says, Abraham Lincoln, you did that, didn't you? Well, I couldn't get out of it. There's nobody there who would do anything like that or could do it. Nobody else could pick, a, pick John up and carry him across the floor. I said, yes, ma'am, very quickly. Well, I knew I was in trouble going one muddy footprint too far. <laughs> she says, Abraham Lincoln, <clears throat> I ought to wring your neck like I wring the neck of a chicken. Well, I had seen her do that. Have you ever seen anybody wring the neck of a chicken? Now, come on. Who has? Tell me. Be honest. Oh, uh, how many have ever done that? You done that? You've done it. Well, it's not a pretty sight. If you're watching somebody do that, the wings are flopping, the legs are flopping. It is not a very pretty sight. Well, I knew my mother couldn't really do that, but I knew by that... Uh, that little comparison that she was not very happy. She was not laughing at this one. Like she laughed when she got the green snake. She said, Abraham Lincoln, you will clean those footprints off that ceiling and you'll put that whitewash back on there, won't you? I said, yes, ma'am, very quickly I said that. So uh, we, let, we let them dry and well, I stayed away from my mother that afternoon. I didn't get close to her. Um, we let them dry, and then I, I cleaned off the, the mud, scraped off the mud, brushed them off. Then my father got some uh, whitewash and gave me a brush to go over and, and cover it up. My father didn't say much, but he looked at me like uh, I knew what he was thinking. Abraham, that's a crazy thing. Why did you do a stupid thing like that? Anyway, I got the whitewash, put it back up there, cleaned up the white ceiling, it looked very good, just like it did before. And my mother was satisfied. Later on, she did laugh about it. She did laugh about it. And I remember 35 or 40 years later, I'm moving along in time now to the time when I was elected president, president-elect, I was elected as the president-elect of the uh, United States in 1860. And before I went to Washington, I went home to see my stepmother. We spent two or three days together and talked about this, that, and the other, about old times. And she asked me one time, you remember those muddy footprints you put on my white ceiling, Abraham? I said, Mother, I do remember that. And you were really angry. She said, well, yes, I was, but you know, I loved you then and I love you now. And she, uh, she pointed her finger at me uh, like she had when I put the muddy footprints on the ceiling. Not to reprimand me, but to warn me. <clears throat> she says, Abraham, you be careful when you go to Washington because they, I've heard some stories about people up there who don't like you very well and I've heard that they might want to do something bad to you. So you be very, very careful. I said, oh, mother, I will. Nothing's going to happen. It's just stories. Don't worry about it. People say all kinds of things. It's just stories. Don't worry about it. It'll be just fine. Well, I probably should have listened to my mother. I, um, I got threatening letters when I was president. Want to do things to me, shoot me, hang me, kill me. And then one evening, one evening I was going home from the White House to the uh, old soldiers home up on the hill. Somebody shot at me and the bullet went through the top of my hat. I guess if I had a shorter hat, it might hit my head. I don't know. I didn't, and nobody was with me. I didn't take anybody with me to watch. I just I rode my horse through the darkness of the night. 
Uh, so I should have listened to my mother, especially before Mary and I went to the field. I was not very careful. There was one man who was there to protect me, and he got a little bit desirous of some drinks and he wanted to imbibe a little bit. Left his post. I should have insisted on maybe two men there. Because I remember my mother all the time I was there, my mother pointing her finger at me and saying, Abraham, you be careful. And I wasn't very careful. So today, you may have learned something from your mothers way back yonder, who told you something you thought at that time it might have been, uh, well, that's kind of silly, that kind of mountain thing. And maybe today, you might look back on it and think, oh, maybe my mother was right. I learned from that experience that most of the time, mothers are correct. They are right, as my mother was back there when I was a 12-year-old boy. I should have listened to her and be, been more protective of myself. Years of the Lincoln Society, and he did a number of jobs this summer, moving and packing, and decided that he wanted to give all the money to the uh, Lincoln Statue Fund. Samuel Black. Would you like to take a picture? Five hundred and eleven dollars, which is the address of the Ford's Theater. Is it quantity of pennies or dollar, dollar amount? Thank you. I, I did this uh, uh, for all the summer jobs I, I did uh, to do it for the statue. $511 and that's it. And why 511 Because it was the address of Ford's Theater. You take your water, figure that. Oh, you did it. I'm sorry. I'll tell you what, I'll just work with these guys on this. Okay, yeah. How about? Hey, well, I'll learn a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that. 1861. Stephen Douglas dies in Illinois while rallying Northern Democrats to the Union cause. Sam, would you like to get a card and play bingo? Lula? What time are you planning on doing the retirement ceremony? Uh, probably quarter of seven. Quarter of seven? Yeah, I've got my lady friends here, so we're going to walk around a little bit, so. Yeah. Yeah. Marcus. So, oh, she said it was okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. There. Those are Top hats. Yeah, those are to put on your uh, card. Would your mom like to play, too? Uh, mom? Okay, so that was N, June 3, 1861. Stephen Douglas dies in Illinois while rallying Northern Democrats to the Union cause. Why don't you play for your mom, too? Oh, sure. Okay, next one. Oh, December 6th, 1864. In annual address to Congress, Lincoln urges the passage of the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery in the United States. Oh, December 6, 1864. Well, aren't you? Gee, you're a great kid. <laughs> Isn't it? Well, we should have more kids like this. Yeah. Huh? We'd have that statue up. <laughs> it's incredible. You know what? Bob and I are going to match that now. Yep, sure. Yes, it's a matching grant. Yes. Oh my gosh. How about that? <laughs> I didn't even mention that. I forgot about it. Oh. Yeah, so you made it $1,022. <gasps> Woohoo! <laughs> Woo! Um, G, February 1, 1864. Lincoln admits this war is eating my life out. I have a strong impression that I shall not live to see the end. Lincoln Wright wrote this to Governor Andrus of Massachusetts. Okay. I, March 6, 1857. In the Dred Scott decision, the U.S. Supreme Court allows for the extension of slavery into U.S. territories, prompting Lincoln to re-enter politics. John, would you like a card? No, I'm resting. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, that was I, March 6, 1857. Oh, September 19, 1864. Lincoln asked General Sherman to make it possible for soldiers from Indiana to go home to vote. Otherwise, they didn't have any voice. That was all September 19, 1864. Uh oh. Are you okay? Oh. 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 Let it go, let it go. <laughs> you know it's downhill. Oh boy. <laughs> we didn't I realized it was coming. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> oh, thank you. That was funny. Oh, I tell you, Ben. Can you do that one more time? Swear. He and I just played sports. One more time. Here's the tree. We went backwards. Hey, you guys over here. We tried. They're complaining because they're going down. Come on, Gracie. You're probably going to go. Gracie, this side. Ready? Set? Go. Okay. 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 Okay.